single squid go, doing the do as it always does. Great tactic at this time of year and a great result so far. So I want to talk a little bit about my rigs for this situation. Obviously it's a new lake, I know next to nothing about it. Um, and in that situation, I haven't got time to go around in the boat and look at all the areas, you know. I've, got, I've only got time to look for fish. So the first thing I'm doing is looking for fish. When I found the fish, I want to cast to the fish. And uh, in that situation, I need a rig that's going to present over most terrains, you know. I'm not looking for spots. I literally want to be able to put my rig where that fish has jumped and, and present the bait in a way where the fish can see it. If the fish can see it, then they have the option to take it. So my version of the, the spinner rig or the Ronnie rig as such, I'm fishing it much like a chod rig. So I've got the bead on the lead core leader pushed up, I don't know, two feet, two feet up the leader. So halfway up a four foot leader um, to allow to present over low lying weed, maybe a little bit of bottom debris. And with that bead pushed up the lead core leader, as the lead descends, the rig is pushed back up the, up the leader to the top, top bead. And it should, all being well, come to rest on top of the weed, leaving the pop-up sitting proud. Now the hooking arrangement I use is um, maybe a little bit different to most people's. Um, I use the hybrid stiff material and I fish that five, five and a half inches long and I crimp it. You know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer, in, you can't crimp most coated braids, but this, this particular one does take to crimping. And when you steam that hybrid stiff with the crimps on it, it is a thing of absolute beauty. It's minimal, it's sleek, it's strong. You know, it's a 20 pound breaking strain product, but when crimped on the machines at work, they've had it over 30 pounds. So it is really, really strong. Um, on the end of that, the thing that makes a spinner rig a spinner rig is the spinner swivel. And um, I'm using a kicker, a cut down large one. So I take a little bit off, maybe two or three mil off the end, slide that over the eye, put it onto the, onto the quick change swivel. A lot of people use the spinner rig with, um, a curved shanked or a sweeping shanked hook um, and catch really well on it. But I don't really like that pattern hook personally. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of wide gapes and choddies. They're pretty much the same hook, you know, wide gapes and choddies. One's got a down turned eye and one's got a back turned eye. Um, and I've been using the wide gapes since 2003, 2004. Um, and I've just got so much confidence I don't like to change certain things like that. These days I'm using the, the wide gape X versions, which are the extra thick wire. Um, and in this situation, fishing for really big carp, you'd probably expect me to be using a four or two. You know, I know Dan, Dan loves big hooks. He uses fours and twos all the time. But I'm a, I, I love the size six. Um, I've caught loads of fish on it. And the, the one thing that you'll notice when you use a wide gape on, on the spinner rig as opposed to a curved shanky hook is if you put the, the, the top bead where the, the micro swivel sort of moves up and down in the same place, it's not as aggressive. Um, and that's why most people probably wouldn't go for that pattern. But I've experimented with it and I've put the bead onto the bend, you know, probably a quarter of the way round, just past the shank, just onto the bend. And it seems to, to flip more aggressively in that way. And, the, and another thing and sort of side effect of doing that is when you chuck it into the edge and you look at it, you actually can't see the hook. The hook is completely under the bait, completely out of sight. And uh, the hook holds I've been getting while using that are absolutely amazing. And yes, yeah, it's, it's a confidence thing. You know, I've caught loads of fish from those hooks in the past. It's working really well for me. And I've had some amazing boat battles out there in the thick weed, particularly the 53 pounder. If you see that, you'll see the, the footage where the rod is absolutely hooped. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm exerting serious force to keep the fish out of the weed. Um, and these hooks in these fish's mouth are not moving. They're just straight in, like not plumb center every time, but maybe slightly off to the side, but they are quite far back and they are not sliding, they're holding true, and that's all you can ask for in this situation. Good. 